In this video, I'll be adjusting and repairing the rear hatch release mechanism on a Porsche 944. The rear hatch on the 944 can develop a variety of issues over time, and as these cars age, the hardware associated with the hatch may require adjustment and or replacement. This car is currently experiencing an issue where only one side of the hatch is releasing when operating the motorized hatch release from inside the cabin. However, the hatch can be fully opened using the key and lock at the rear of the car. So before getting into the repair, let's take a look at the different components in the system. In order to access the hatch release mechanism, you'll first need to unsnap the carpet liner from the rear cargo area and pull it out of the way. The components here include hatch pins and mounting brackets, a central locking mechanism, two pin receivers that double as water drains, and a motor with an actuating arm and cable system connected to the primary lock control. When the key is turned, the primary locking component actuates two metal rods, one for each pin receiver. The rods connect to ball joints that pull the two locking arms apart inside each hatch pin receiver. These arms close around the hatch pins to lock them in place, and when the hatch lock mechanism is actuated, the arms open to release the hatch pins. If you're experiencing an issue with the hatch only locking on one side, there are a few things that you'll want to inspect, and one of those is the locking arms. With the locking mechanism released, confirm that the arms inside each pin receiver are in a fully closed position. If one of them is partially open, you'll need to disconnect the ball joint below the receiver and loosen the plastic ball socket on its connecting rod, thereby extending the overall length of the rod. Before removing the ball socket, make sure to open the locking clip on the end of that fitting so that the socket isn't damaged during the process. You'll also want to inspect the hatch pins for any wear, as the pins and locking arms make contact each time the hatch is open and closed. Material can be shaved away from the hatch pins to the point where replacement may be warranted. If you need to do so, the pins can be purchased for around $10 to $25 a piece. It's also a good idea to inspect the height adjustment on each of the hatch pins. If your rear hatch is rattling or loose when it's closed, it could indicate that either the hatch pin seats are worn and due for replacement, or that the hatch pins may require adjustment. When adjusting or replacing the hatch pins, the left and right pin should both extend from the hatch in generally equal lengths. You can then go ahead and close the hatch and check for any gaps on the left or right side in between the rear body panel and the urethane spoiler, tightening any of the pins to eliminate the gaps. As you begin to work on the pins, you may find that they've become rusted in place, in which case you should first apply a wire brush and some penetrating lubricant to avoid breaking the pins. If the pins end up breaking, you'll need to drill them out and tap the threads, or simply replace the retaining mounts on the hatch along with the pins themselves. To adjust or replace the hatch pins, you'll first need to loosen the 13mm lock nut at the base of the pin, and then the pin can be loosened or tightened accordingly. The pins on the early cars featured a notch in the bottom of the pins, where a flathead screwdriver can be used for adjustment. The later cars have solid pins, so you'll need to use some pliers or vice grips on the end of the pin, and if you'd like to reuse the pins, you may want to wrap the pin in some cloth to reduce any tool damage. Alternatively, if you can track down or fabricate some size M8 C-shaped washers, those can be stacked on the non-threaded section of the pin and the lock nut tightened against them. Then a 13 millimeter wrench can be used to loosen the pin. Another item to inspect is the cable adjustment on the motor for the automatic release. If there is significant play between the cable and its connection point, the actuating arm will not be able to fully open the central locking mechanism. To remove the play from the cable, simply loosen the 10 millimeter jam nut on the end of the cable sheath, pull the sheathing back, and tighten the inside jam nut to lock it back down. A properly adjusted cable will still have a small gap at the end point due to the travel length of the rotating arm. It's best to adjust the cable incrementally and test operation to ensure that it's not over tightened. Try to adjust it so that there's a slight gap between the connecting rod pins and the center support when the rotating arm is fully actuated. With the slack removed, the motor will now be able to fully actuate the lock and release the hatch pins. When I inspected the components on this car, I found that the locking arms within each pin receiver were fully closed and the rods properly connected, so no adjustment was needed there. In looking at the hatch pins, I found a small amount of wear on the left pin, and after measuring the pin heights, uh, the left pin was extending out about 1 16th inch further than the right pin, with a little bit of gap on the left side, so I went ahead and tightened the left pin to match the height of the right pin, which also allowed me to move that wear point to a section that doesn't directly contact the locking arms, and that way I'll get a little bit more use out of these pins. I also discovered some play at the end of the motor cable system. 
that was causing the lock to open only halfway when released. After adjusting the pin, eliminating the cable slack, and retesting the automatic release, the hatch is now opening properly. Well, that concludes the hatch release repair tutorial. Hopefully you found some of this information useful, and good luck in your restoration efforts.